Welcome to another episode of the Starter Girls Podcast with your host, Jennifer Loading. And Brianna Drellis. And together we are the Starter Girls. We're extraordinary decisions <laughs> produce extraordinary results. These are our friends, these are your friends, and they are living the extraordinary. Today's episode is brought to you by Walt Mills Photographer with Glad Models Agency. If you are here in the Dallas or surrounding area looking for some photography work, check out Walt Mills. You can learn more about him and his work at photosbywalt.com. Additionally, we want to give a shout out to our friends at the Studio Dallas. The Studio Dallas is the best kept secret here in the Dallas podcasting world. If you are looking for a studio with top-notch technology, video and audio recording capabilities, along with the team to make things go smoothly, the Studio Dallas is the place to be. You can learn more about them through us at startergirls at gmail.com. And head on over to startergirls.com where you can pick up your free gift. We want to help you. A level your decision making skills. <laughs> we have to have an intermission. <laughs> intermission on our podcast today. Every once in a while, we just have a little <sighs> bit too much fun. It was the good. It was the. It, it was the, the candy. It was the candy. We, we All right. It. So All head right. on over to startergirls.com and uh, pick that up because we want to keep in touch with you outside this podcast, and we would love for you to pick that up today. Free gift. All right, we're, to send it. we're getting serious now, for real. All know. right, Sorry. today is a great day to be brave. You might as well start now. You have the power to change your circumstances any day you decide. Let today be that day. Rise up, be amazing, be you, do you. All right, my friends, I am super excited about our guest today. This is going to be fun. All right, Taylor White is an American figurative artist whose work engages with the fundamental elements of being. I love this little mm. bio piece right here. Really impressive. Combining refined techniques of classical training with bright, unexpected color choices born from the residue of street art and pop culture, White's work explores the way in which we experience the formless chaos of potential through being and how the order we inhabit can sometimes dissolve backwards into the incredible complexity from which it emerged. Okay, so here's the cool part. Listen to this. She has exhibited internationally from Melbourne to Berlin, LA, Miami, Atlanta, Chicago, and Detroit. She's contributed to events for, is this, is this Judy or Juddy? Uh, Juddy. Juddy Roller. I love this. Outer Space Project, Richmond Mural Project, Murals in the Market. These are some of the things she's done. In 2018, she worked with Google Fiber to create one of the largest public-facing augmented reality murals in the world. In 2021, she completed Raleigh's second augmented reality mural, 8-bit to 5G, a tribute to the future of gaming and esports in the city of Raleigh. So this is awesome. Current clients include Microsoft and Lulamon. So welcome to the show, Taylor. We are super excited to have you here today. I'm so grateful to have uh, to be able to be here. And your enthusiasm makes my bio sound so much more exciting. So I know, is it not funny? <laughs> We've got the giggles today too. Like you, we try to, you know, we have fun on this show, and usually we're pretty serious in the intro. But today, I don't know. We like got it going on. So, and that's my favorite part is reading the bios. By the way. She has a gift Great. for reading bios. So anytime <laughs> that you need someone to do an intro for you, that's your girl right there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm that MC person, like to read the bios. I get excited reading them. That's why I have so much fun because I'm like, these people, these people that come on this show do like really cool things. And I get so excited seeing like their amazingness, you know, because yeah. they're like, you got to, you got to do stuff to make this happen. Absolutely. Right? Like you don't wake up and that stuff just gets there. You got to work hard to make these things happen. I just get excited seeing all that. So... We're excited for you, Taylor. Happy to have you here. So I'm excited too. Just want to make yeah, sure I'm speaking yes. into my microphone. Hey, it's all good. So tell us it's a little good. bit about how this came about for you. How did I mean? Did you like you were a baby and you just started painting? Tell us how this this artwork come about for you. Uh, it it pretty much was. It went just like that. Like I have been drawing and painting since I was two and a half or so. I think my earliest the earliest artifact is from age two. Wow. Um, so I, you know, loved drawing on printer paper that my dad would bring home from the, his, his office and my parents, you know, did what they could to encourage and support and always gave me the materials and, and things like that. So it was just a matter of like throughout my life, how I was going to figure out how to make a living doing the doing the art so 
I love it. I, would, I, I think it'd be so fun to like, you just see your work like when you were a taught, you know, a taught to see how this stuff is manifested because her work is incredible. I was looking at some of your stuff on the site. It's just incredible. Yeah, I appreciate it. I mean, I, it started out with as like kids drawings do like cartoon characters and Ninja Turtles and E.T. and The Land Before Time, dinosaurs and ostriches and stuff like that, you know? Um, yeah. I think the the thing that was the most striking is in for my childhood drawings, like the earliest ones, is that um, you know around two or three, I was drawing um, faces, mm. but like you know, crude, obviously. But the feet, like it would include like the features, like there would be a circle, and then two circles, and then another circle, and then kind of like a slit, and then ears on the side, and limbs so um the dexterity and attention to detail that that would require was a little bit advanced i think for yeah that age so absolutely absolutely and was that what tipped your parents off that maybe you need to take some art classes yeah i'm pretty sure my mom took one of my drawings to like a be psychologically evaluated at one point <laughs> She's like, what should going I on be here? worried about? My <laughs> should diet? I be worried or excited? I don't know. Yeah, that's so awesome. I love it. So, mm -hmm. when you're creating art, I'm just I'm trying to envision this because you know this this uh, Brianna's in the music industry. I'm you know completely different than that, but I love being creative, not to like you are by any means. But so when you go in there and you're creating this art, what does this look like for you? Like, are you in there for like hours doing this? Or is this like you come and you go kind of thing? Or do you just like do this? How does this all work for you? Um, I do have a tendency to, I like, like now, you know, now I'm a little more responsible for my day-to-day -day schedule. And I try to make sure that I set hours to be in the studio or to be on a, a mural project if I, if that's what I'm doing that week. Um, so schedule is a little different. If I'm on a mural project, I go in at, you know, nine and finish at anywhere between four and six o'clock. Um, sometimes I break for lunch and a lot of times I forget. Um, but in the studio, it's roughly the same hours, but I do, I'm able to take breaks and tend to, you know, domestic, you know, things that I need taken care of and all of that stuff and take breaks for food and things. But I um, rarely, my dog's back there, rarely um, push myself past like a regular working hour, you know, 6, sure. 6.30 p.m. Because um, I found that uh, I'm generally more productive if I stick to that kind of schedule yeah. rather than try to push myself into the late hours, which is kind of a cliche. People are like, you know, you must stay up you must stay up into the middle of the night just being creative. I'm like, no, dude, I'm boring. I go to bed at like 10. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I can so. see how at some point you have to kind of turn that off too to refuel. I mean, you're enjoying it, obviously, as she's saying the flow word, like she, when she talked about forgetting to eat, you know, because it's definitely mm -hmm. you're in that zone doing what you love to do. And that's that that thing we talk about. Flow, you're just fortunate Flow enough, state, yeah. Yeah, that you've been able to take your gift and really put that into something. This is going to we got a visitor back there. Oh my gosh. This, She's, so this like, is, this, this is Mina. She's, this she would wants be so attention. like my dog right here. This would be my, my pit bull right yeah. here doing this to me. Totally. Like yes. calling me in the background. Like, so I'm sorry. You've been out all day. It's time to pay attention to me. That's right. That's right. But don't worry. I'll, I'll get you. We all have pets. A little so. bit later. I love it. So, so you've got, <laughs> you're in the middle of something right now. You've got an exhibit going on right now, right? Am I correct? Yeah. We had I do. just like scroll it across the screen. Yeah. Tell us about this exhibit that's going on. So I, um, you know, I, I make my living as a muralist and I have a fine art practice on the side. And for years I had been, I've been wanting to do gallery shows and had, you know, some trouble, like, finding the time and or getting the attention of galleries that I wanted to show with. And at a certain point, I just kind of decided if I was going to show, I needed to just do it myself. Um, and, you know, it, it, it existed kind of as a thought for, for quite a while. Like one of these days I should do this and I'll just make a casual inquiry here and there as to like what that would look like. Um, but then um, 
this year I had the opportunity to take advantage of a, a pop-up revitalization program with the Downtown Raleigh Alliance. Um, and they were, you know, unfortunately lots of businesses succumbed to the pandemic this year. And so there were a lot of empty storefronts that they would like to um, revitalize with pop-up businesses. And so I got in touch with one of these people through a, a friend when I just made an inquiry about a commercial space and one thing led to another and it was like, all right, well, this thing that I've been thinking about doing for a year is about to happen, like in three months, you know? Um, so I made the commitment, took the risk and uh, put the show together in pretty much just over three months. Um, we had our opening night on Friday, June 11th. It was huge. It was such an awesome time. Um, had like over a hundred people come through past break even on the night and um, we've just been pushing it, pushing it out ever since. So, well, for four days, but it's open till the August 28th. That's, so awesome. That's amazing. And you're mm -hmm. selling all of you're selling work inside this um, pop up and. Mm hmm. That's incredible. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I've got, you know, original works in various sizes and I got a print that's available and I will probably do another print release before the show is over. Um, but right now I'm just, I'm kind of mentally and physically recovering from the past three months and the opening and everything. So I expected to have a little bit more of my wits about me by now, but. Do you feel like a train uh, or a truck hit you? I always feel the like there's a big launch, you know, when there's a big launch and like you completely underestimate the physical toll that it takes on you because uh, creativity is emo can be emotionally draining and like putting out an yeah. effort like this at this scale, you know, like really like takes so much out of you and you don't anticipate that. It absolutely does. It's physically draining. Um, you know, even just like I remember I had a solo, solo exhibition, um, two years ago in Atlanta and it was the same. Like I was there for, you know, three or four hours. Um, and at the end I could not, I could not keep my head up. Um, tried to go out to dinner and basically fell asleep in my salad. Um, so I knew like for, for this time not to try and schedule anything for after the show, but like that for, I felt hungover for like three days just from the, emotional toll and the, the physical toll. Um, and it's just like, I mean, I think it's, you know, you've, you've put three months of sort of nonstop focus and then you have a big event where I'm, you know, I'm not designed for being a host, especially not for hundreds of people. Um, so I had to put myself into a mindset that was really uh, foreign to my, my abilities and, uh, that was just on top of everything an additional effort. So, mm -hmm. um, so it was a lot, but so worth it. You know, I mean, there's nothing better than putting yourself out and out of your comfort zone in service of a, you know, higher goal. So. Uh, yeah. It forces you to grow a little bit, you know, and I think, you, yeah, you learn through that process. And as you keep growing, I mean, you can, you get to that place where you might, you know, say, Hey, you know, I'm really good at this piece. And maybe I find this person that's really good at that piece. I can get out and promote and do all that stuff and, and, you know, take that, that pressure off, but you're definitely doing cool stuff. And I had a really good question. Oh, I know what I wanted to ask you, Taylor, your inspiration. Cause we were, you know, we always talk about like how, like we, we, one of the shows we just did right, uh, you know, earlier before we did yours, we were talking about, you know, where do you find your creativity? And for all of us, it's in different places. We all have different ways that we show creativity. And for me, a lot of times, you know, I come up with ideas that I'm doing for like, even when I'm creating like thumbnails for the podcast or whatever the titles that I have to come up with, you know, like a lot of that stuff will come at these like weird moments. Like when I'm not really trying to have them, like when I'm walking mm -hmm. the dogs or when I'm reading a book or doing something else and I have to hurry up and be like, I got to write that down. Like I have to get that on paper because I know I'm going to forget 10 minutes later. I'm not going to remember what I'm doing. So I'm curious to know, like your inspired creativity, like when you're doing these murals and all that stuff, do you kind of have an idea when you go in there or do you just have, do you have these moments where you do like these brain thinking processes for yourself or is this stuff just kind of come to you? 
It's a mix. I think, you know, for murals, the process is a little different because a lot of times I'll have a client and I'll be in conversation with them and they'll have something sort of in mind. Um, so that will guide my thinking a little bit. Um, but I, I, you know, visually speaking, of course, I, tr I try my best to, um, Mina, stop it. <laughs> Sorry. Excuse me. Um, I, I try my best to, you know, keep it visually consistent. Um, but in my private, in my studio practice, I, you know, I've been, I kind of try to continue to explore the common threads visually and intellectually that I've been for the last couple of years, just because I think as an artist, it's important to sh have your audience be able to see like a evolution sure, um, rather than just kind of bouncing around from thing to thing. So I have been working on studying the human body for several years now. You know, I started with dancers and circus performers because that's who I was surrounded by. And now I'm just kind of focusing on just sort of softer ways of expressing it. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm inspired by a lot of sort of intellectual and philosophical and spiritual ideas and my observations about the world and you know, the annoyance of the, the internet and this endless entertainment and, and noise and information that we're barraged by and try to try to sort of make sense or something useful out of all of that. So that is where kind of the flatness and the, the collage and patterns of all these, these kind of unexpected colors and imagery come in where I, I collage them into the the image of the human form and make something new and arguably beautiful. I think beautiful. Why not? Awesome. Um, but, but, you know, you know, I'll take it. Like I have photos that I work from. I have photos that I've taken or that I've purchased. Um, and I have, you know, as far as the patterns and textures, it comes from anywhere and everywhere. You know, I like screenshot crappy JPEGs off of my phone and, or save things that I find on the internet or take pictures or, or whatever and just keep a, you know, if I like it, I save it and then I'll yeah. end up using it later. Very cool. So, yeah. I love that. So Thank you. It's so deep. I love it. I feel like you're a really deep thinker, like you're processing and it comes all out into that paint and stuff. I, I can know. just see this. Like, I know. I'm like, I can picture like this cacophony of like yeah movement and stuff yeah. and then yeah. like this like. You know, this this is the anti over here of the cacophony, yeah. you know, like. Yeah, it's kind of like a mixture of like very loose style and also very particular, you know. Yeah. Um, I haven't quite been able to like completely let go when I'm working and make something that's chaotic. And, you know, it's like there's this organization to the chaos. And I think that's important and actually ties into some of the deeper meaning. Sure. You know, so, behind the the idea of order and chaos, and how those two factors are equally important in life. You know, yeah, very close. Taylor, you've been all over the. You've just been all over. Your stuff is everywhere. So, any you have set? Is there any like particular big goal you're like really like maybe a bucket list kind of thing that you would love to do with your artwork? Anything that's come into mind that you think this would just be like amazing? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, like back before. I stopped traveling due to unforeseen circumstances. Um, I would have said, you know, continue to travel the world and hit every city and do bigger and bigger projects and high profile projects in every city. And frankly, now I'm just exhausted at the very thought of it. Um, so I, you know, I'm, I'm now building my like home and building my sort of living arrangement and everything. And I'd like to be able to be a little bit more based and like, ha um, a little more like solidly focus on my home base and still travel for selected projects, but it would be great to be able to be very choosy about which project I travel for. Yeah. Um, you know, I love, you know, I, I'm really thankful that I'm getting corporate clients. Um, you know, it's most of these are, are, are physical locations for these corporations. Um, but most of these 
big companies are moving to the area. Um, and I'm getting a lot of attention because of that. So I feel like there's, there's a, there's a lot of room for me to have a lot of local projects for the next couple of years so I can yeah. work on homesteading and growing my own food and things. I love it. Um, you know what I mean? So, yeah. uh, it's, it's just different. It's just different, different set of goals that are kind of materializing now. Obviously make more money, but that's right. There's a million I, ways to do that. So I think life is, I'm doing like well that. now. Yeah, so. no, I think she's doing great. Yeah. I know. I love it. Yeah. I think that, you know, life is like that. Your priorities change. You know, you, like you said, you know, before our unforeseen circumstances, you were traveling and doing these other things. But I think, I think that's how it is in our business as we grow as entrepreneurs and whatever we're doing, that we get better at our craft. And we realize that we can be more selective about the people that we choose to work with and where we choose to work and how we want to conduct our business. And so I think that's the beauty of it is when you get to be at that place where you can make those choices. So, and you're definitely, absolutely, you know, in that place. Yeah. And I think for a long time, I kind of was locked into the idea that being like art was a traveler's game. And there's a lot of truth to that. Like the, the contemporary artists that are really prolific and working, like they got to be on the road. They got to be traveling around all the time. Um, and a lot of artists would tr like chase that, you know, myself included. And, and I'm, I'm just looking at different ways that I can be successful and feeling more stable and more successful now that I'm not going anywhere than I have, than I was when I was going everywhere, you know? Um, so I think that there's truth to the fact that you have to be willing to go where the job, the work is, but also you can, uh, you can, there's room to like play, bend the rules a little bit there. Yeah. Bloom where you're, bloom where you're planted kind of comes to mind too, because at the end of the day, you, especially now, I just feel it's, it's more acceptable for us to, to work from wherever, to be location independent. And mm -hmm. um, clearly you've created something really successful and great for yourself there where, you know, where you're located and um, people can come to you or you can bring their stuff to them in different ways. And I, right. I was going to ask, I, I find this fascinating because, you know, as an artist growing up, your parents encouraged you but you knew okay I got to figure out a way to like make money at this art thing and so many artists don't look at it that way they just assume okay I'm going to make art and just be starving the rest of my life and struggling and all the things so yeah how, and it's y'all's it? fault that people <laughs> think they don't have to pay for art yeah. well <laughs> Just that was a half of a joke. I know. No, it is. A, I mean, it is. Yeah. A, it is a little bit of an issue because artists don't know how to, don't know how to promote, promote, market. and don't know how to think of themselves as a business. And I understand right. that. Like, I understand why that is because it. It's like you're. you're if you're so self-identified with it, like, how can you monetize yourself? Right. You know. Um, well, yeah, you how are can the you brand, like, right? How can you separate? Well, I mean, you know, now we live in a world where everyone's a brand. Right. You know. 100%. Um. So it's a little different now that everybody is selling themselves as a as a personality or whatever. But I do think that when your when your output is so like something you would do naturally, it's really hard to be like, okay, well, this is what I'm charging. This is art that I'm charging for, and this is art that I'm not charging for. And so there's like this guilt and uh, the sense that like you would be doing it anyway. So why not just go ahead and do it for free? But you shouldn't sing for your supper ever because then you get the reputation of doing that. And then they, you know, that's the whole idea of like art artists should work for cheap or nothing because, you know, you, you get paid an exposure, you get paid in other ways, you know? Yeah. Um, which is ridiculous. so I think artists, artists being willing, like artists being willing to, un, you know, to work for nothing really causes a lot of issues f for everybody else in the marketplace, first of all. And also for them, because then they wake up one day and they're like, I really need to, make a living. And I, I just never learned how to do that. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So my question is really like, what made you realize or was it someone? Was it like, who gave you that business like to know? Cause you are so creative and you're so in it over here, but you're able to see that Oh, no, no, no. I can. It's okay for me to monetize this. It's okay for me to charge what my art is worth. You know, 
how did that like when did that switch flip for you uh my 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 parents worked hard to impart that in in me my you know my dad gives gave me a really great business education whether i liked it or not and um you know my mom is also uh she was a opera singer and mm. taught taught and when i was growing up until she retired taught high school students and she was around that all the time where op like singers were expected to perform for free and singers would like beg to perform for free a lot of the time and so it was like she was always like just don't just don't be like that because like she literally it was literally don't sing for your supper because then no one will ever pay you to do anything mm. um and so there was that and then i also went to like i got I went to school at SCAD, which is um, career-centered art education. And I didn't really get business education per se, but it was like a way to shift into the mindset of like you're 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 an artist, but you're having a your look your goal is to have a career in the arts and not just be an artist. Um so I think a, a combination of all that and then my own instincts along the way. And then, you know, just, I have a, you know, a standard of living that I want to maintain. Um, so it's just a matter of being able to, um, implement that as, as best I can. Yeah. And practice not, practice being able to be, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. I mean, the, right. the colloquial thing would be to like, take no S H I T, but, um, sure. but you know, just learn how to learn how to advocate for yourself and be kind and open and know when to say no. I love it. Taylor. So mm -hmm. great, ma'am. Yeah, good stuff. It's, it's so important. Yeah. Also, like if in if there's young artists listening to just mm -hmm. to know that. And it's really with any creative field, any, you know, mm -hmm. any facet of art, music, whatnot. You know, it's just so important that, you know, I always tell like my daughters, like, okay, you want to like my youngest, she wants to be an artist. She's been saying she wants to be an artist since she was three years old. I go, okay, great. But you're also going to have like a business minor or you're going to let me and your dad teach you business because we got to you mm -hmm. know, show you how right. you can monetize your art because you can and it's okay. <laughs> exactly. It is. That's, I mean, that's exactly the education I got. It was like, okay, you're an artist, but you're also, you also have to be in the world and earn a living and be independent by the way, you know, yeah. don't forget. And so, you know, growing up, it's an annoying conversation because you're like, God, just stop like trying to tell me about money. Like I stop paint. <laughs> stop reminding me that I have to like make money off of this. Like I'm offended by that prospect, you know, but it's also like, duh, of course yeah. you do. And so like the sooner you get that, the better. And, you know, I would say, you know, if you want to be an artist, be like, you don't need to be a business minor. You don't even need to go to college if you want my honest opinion. Like, just learn how to get go online and get a business education. Yeah. Like, just yeah. learn basic economics and how that all works. And then you can just go off and be an artist. Like, figure out your own, like, do your own practice. The, the most uh, promising, like, young artists I see are just people who do it anyway, no matter, like, mm -hmm. like outside of the classroom, outside of the educational paradigm and everything so yeah um i would say get some kind of business education somehow and then surround yourself with the people you want to work with good advice and apprentice yeah. like just just show up on someone's door and be like can i you know learn can i clean up after you like for a few weeks or whatever like can i help with this project can i do this kind of that and like most of them will say yes and that's how you get ingratiated to them. And that's how you get the connections that you need to go out in the world and do it. Bam. That is so great. Great advice, Taylor. We would we would agree with you 100% because I would say the same thing about that in any field that you do. Find a mentor and get out there and get busy and do what you need Actually, to do. Actually, don't, don't waste your money on higher education if you don't need it. If all you really need is to learn how to 
be a business person, you know? Yeah. Good stuff, Taylor. Good Love stuff. it. Thank you, Taylor. Okay. Well, we got to ask right, I got a couple fun questions I want to ask. I think we should do some fun with her because we're going to, we're gonna, I think this is all great, but I got to ask you. So when you're, I'm going to ask this, when you are painting, do you play music or do you put anything on Does it to listen to when you're doing your work? It depends on my mood. I do put okay. I do put something on generally all the time. I'll either go uh, here's here's Mina again. I'll, I'll either she hello. says I want to be on a camera. I want attention. I need to uh, be on I will either go camera. for Mina is so cute. This looks like my, my pit bull at home. Oh. This looks just like my dog. I'm like so I might cute. crack it up. So I'll either cute. go for uh, podcasts or um or um Spotify playlists or sometimes. TV series, but it has to be something that I like, something that I don't have to pay attention to. Gotcha. Like, mm, just yeah. some noise, something yeah. happening. That's kind of what like I like. Something that, like, usually it's like a series. If I watch like series, like television or whatever, mm -hmm. um, it'll be something I've seen a million times. So I can just mm -hmm. picture it in my mind. Um, but also YouTube. Yeah. It's just good to know. It is. Videos. Hey, yeah. Are you, are you a Marvel fan by chance? I'm a fan. I don't. I don't know if I would call myself a fan, um, but I enjoy them when I see them on planes, um, Marvel films. I'm just curious. I I kind of want to ask her the. Go for it. I, I'm really curious if you could be a superhero or cartoon character for mm. a day. Oh my gosh. Who would you choose? We're gonna make her think. I know, cause like That's your good, brain we, is we like asked so that question creative. Yeah, yeah, she is so creative. You're so yes. creative. So I'm just. Curious. I mean, I would be the. I would be. Uh, I would be the avatar because it would just be great to be able to bend all four elements. Oh, um, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So Spider-Man cool. can stay home. I'd rather be the, the avatar. That's so good. Love it. Yeah. I love creative people. Their brains are just oh, so like... In, in and it's there. like we can like watch mm -hmm. your brain work yeah. and that's like what's so fun about it, this. I know. Is, like, She's like thinking. We're talking like, to you mm -hmm. and I'm like, I see it happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The wheel. Well, I gotta, I've got I've got to look inward because I can't really tell where to look on the screen. I can't look at myself because that's distracting. And mm -hmm. if I look over here, I'm not, you know, Yeah, whatever, we can so see you thinking over there. We can see the thought process it. going over there. It's, it's going over there. So I do want to ask you one more fun question. So where has been probably, I guess, maybe the most, maybe one of your favorite places that you've traveled? Has there been like a, a particular place that you really have just been like, this This is beautiful scenery, the, the, just, you know, loving it there? You know, I, there are so many beautiful places. Um mm -hmm. I I have had some of the most beautiful experiences in parts of Australia, like rural parts, well, especially along the west coast of Australia. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Thailand is amazing. Like northern Thailand and Cambodia yeah. is really remarkable um, for different reasons. Um, and like, frankly, there's just a ton of cool things to see here in the United States, like all the national parks, like Yellowstone, all of those places. So yeah. um, my, my travel goals from here on out are like to hit a lot of those places. Yeah. There's a um, lot of scenery here in the States. So sure. much scenery. Yeah. I've told this before on a podcast, my oldest daughter got to go to Australia on a trip. And so I, she was really young when she went and it was a, one of these like ambassador type programs where like several adults went with all these kids and, they got to go over there and so she got to do a bunch of stuff and it was so funny we were teasing her when she came back because she came back with all these pictures of just like pots and and I was like I want scenery like can you bring me some pictures of like the Great Barrier Reef like I want some scenery she did send me some pictures bring some pictures of kangaroos but it was yeah. the funniest thing because it was like she's taken she was impressed with the um the stadium that they have recyclable material on the the stand the seats in there hmm. so that to her was like just something that she thought was really cool at the time so i hear australia That's is great. a great place australia is amazing I, it's one of my favorite places it's it's awesome. big and vast and yeah. crazy and yeah i love it awesome so well, Taylor, this has been fun. You are an amazing individual. Love what you're doing. Love your work. If we want to, I know Chris has been scrolling stuff all over the screen about your your exhibit that's going on right now. And so where do we want to send our, our people? Tell them one more time where to send them if they want to see your work and what you're doing. 
Well, if you are in Raleigh, you can come to 21 West Target Street and see Pursuit of Happiness, which is my solo exhibition that's on until August 28th. Um, if you find yourself somewhere else but wishing you could see Pursuit of Happiness, you can go on my website, taylorwhite.art, um, and you can download the show catalog there and read a little bit more about it and and about me and everything. And then you can also follow me on Instagram at taylurk, T-A-Y-L-U-R-K. Awesome. Um, we'll, make, we'll make sure too, when we get this, you know, get all this put together and everything that uh, everybody knows where to find you too. So we'll get you tagged. Sure. Good stuff too. So it's been fun. Keep doing it. Yeah, this thing. was a lot of fun. Thank you so much great for having me. You, Taylor, great to meet you. Really great to meet you. Thanks for, thanks for your, your work. And, 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 your doing. Fun, and your fun dog back there, too. We had fun with her, too. <laughs> oh, Mina. Mina we is... Fun with me. Mina has Mina. been... She got to make her debut appearance on the Starter Girls <laughs> podcast. <laughs> we'll have to exactly. be sure we'll put it in there. And Mina made an appearance and, as well. And, <laughs> yeah, you can put it on my third, uh, lower third and yeah, Mina. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, we do want to say to our audience, of course, if you enjoy our podcast, please be sure you give us a rating both on iTunes and Facebook because we can't do this without you and hit that subscribe button on YouTube. And head over to StarterGirls.com and pick up your free gifts so that we can keep in touch. And we want to see you there. So head over to StarterGirls.com today. All right. We're going to leave you with a couple final thoughts. And this one I think is so befitting for today. We all have different gifts. So we all have different ways of saying to the world who we are. And that's by Fred Rogers. And as we always say, in order to have success, you must start. And every start begins with a decision. All right, you guys take care, be safe, and be kind to one another. We will see you next time. Bye.